welcome back to Keeping Up with the Clique. Hi, I hope you're having a fantastic Thursday. Welcome everybody, especially all of our members and our new members. Welcome all of you guys. So last week we talked about the importance of building confidence in your puppy. Tonight we are going to show you some of the fun games that you can actually play. And before I do that, I just want to click over here and give you guys a quick intro. All right, I don't know why it came to just me. We don't want just me. <laughs> oh, because it's on the next scene. The oh next yeah, scene is... next scene was just me. <laughs> okay, so again, tonight we're gonna show you guys some fun games that you can play with your puppy um, or your adult dog. This will work for puppies and adult dogs. Um, it's gonna build their confidence. So from the time that they are born, puppies begin to take on the world that's all around them, right? They live in our world and they have all these new experiences. Each new experience is associated with a reaction that's gonna help shape your dog into what's eventually gonna become an adult dog, hopefully, that is very confident. Um, the imprinting period for puppies is usually six to 20 weeks, give or take, so it could be 6 to 12, 6 to 14, 6 to 16, but up to up to 20 weeks really. Um, and that's really what the time frame that's going to define your dog's um, habits and development and overall um, confidence level. And I don't know why this isn't working. Something's not working on here again. Um, but yeah, see it's just there. I didn't like what you said. Uh-uh. I guess not. <laughs> Sorry. Squirrel. <laughs> so. Where are you? Right there. Right there. Right there. All right. Um, so I'm going to hop into the playroom here in a few minutes and I'm going to show you guys some games that you guys can all play. And of course, if you guys are new and you want to ask some questions, you're more than welcome to ask questions in the chat. Um, we just ask that you put three question marks before the uh, question so that we don't miss your question. And thank you, Jack, for the super sticker. Um, and so if you guys are new, we welcome you guys. Please type new in the comments below so that we can say hello to all of you. And then remember, can you hit favorites on those? Mm -hmm. um, okay, what was I talking about? I forget. It's crazy. My crazy life. Um, okay, so with the help from you, a puppy um, can really take on those new situations with confidence and learn to adapt to a variety of different circumstances. So playing games with your puppy is really gonna build their confidence. Um, so remember that the greatest thing that we can give our dog is the ability to build confidence. And that is like above everything else. We can love our dog all we want, but if we can't give our dog confidence, then they're going to live um, in our world very unsure of things. They're not gonna be confident, they're gonna have anxiety. So that is why this is such an important topic. Another reason why I'm really making a series on this is because with COVID and everybody being home and getting new dogs, we haven't really been able to socialize our dogs the way that we normally would. And part of the problem with that is now we are seeing more and more dogs, puppies, um, that didn't get socialized and they are having confidence issues. And so that's why I really wanna to touch on this um, over the next several weeks and give you guys different um, ideas of things that you guys can do to help boost your dog's confidence. So uh, I am gonna hop over there and show you guys some things that you guys can do. But before I do that, let me just look real fast, see if I have any comments um, or questions that I need to answer, and then I will hop in there. I think we're good. Oh, Chase is on. Hi, Chasey Poo. <laughs> um, I think we're good. I'm talking to Kelly. Oh, oh, Emma. Oh, Alexis is trying to see if they can give away something. By the way, all of their frosted mugs are gone. They sold them all, so they're gonna have to order more. Oh, tell them about our. Machine. Oh yeah, and her machine broke down. So their machine broke down. Um, we, they have five cups sitting here ready to make and their machine pulled it out of the box. Only the third time they've used it, won't work. 
so they have to get a new one so for all of you guys waiting for your frosted mugs they are all prepped and ready and hopefully they will go out hopefully by the weekend early next week at the latest but they had to get a replacement anyhow all right i am going to hop over there i'm going to switch the camera view just to in there and then i will show you guys some fun things um, do we have one just for the playroom? No. Oh. We didn't think. Oh we yeah. Need oh yeah. One. We're doing this one anyways. Yeah. We're doing that. All right. I'm hopping over there. And the mic's there. So that's good. Okay. You can sit in that spot. Okay. I need to sit there. I need to sit here. Hi, babies. Hi. 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 So these puppies are almost eight weeks old. They get to leave Saturday. That's when they turn eight weeks old. Um, and they are Aggie and uh, Ringo's puppies. Remember, these are really big puppies. Normally our puppies aren't this big, but they're ginormous. But they are really confident in things. And so I'm gonna introduce them to a lot of new things today and we'll see how they do. Now, when we introduce um, our puppy to different games and we're trying to build that confidence, it always needs to be a positive experience and we always want to motivate them to do it, but we don't want to force them to do it. So if we give them something to look forward to, to encourage them to do it, they're more likely to do it, but we aren't going to force it on them. So some dogs, we might have to take a step back and go a little slower than others, um, but these puppies are pretty young and so hopefully they will adjust rather quickly. Um, one thing as a breeder that we do, it's our responsibility for all breeders to really do our part to um, build confidence before they even leave here. So, you know, we talked a few minutes ago about that window of opportunity being six to 20 weeks. Well, from six to eight weeks and some breeders even 10 weeks, the puppies are still with us, the breeder. And so we have to do our part before they leave here to give them the best opportunity to have confidence. Um, and then you guys will take over after you bring your puppy home. So a lot of things that we do um, is actually building confidence, yes? Can I butt in? Sure. I have some questions about the shop. What do you, you have questions on there about the shop and yeah. you're wanting to interrupt me? Yeah. <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll get some things ready while you <laughs> while you run your show. Well, while you sell product. No, La Lauren asked about the leggings and I forgot and they just came in today. Oh, they did just come in. Okay, fine. I'll get my <laughs> things. Go ahead. Answer. Jeez, child. <laughs> Lauren, they just came in today. Our um, stock. So me and Kylie will um, be working on those this week, um, and they should be up by the end of the weekend. Also, I have uh, one last frosted cup that was already made that we're going to give away. Oh, we are going to give away one? Yeah, we have one that we made that nobody ordered. One person ordered a red. So we have one that we made. And um, we're giving that one away. <laughs> he, he smells the treat in my hand. So we're giving away this one. It's a red. So both of them are red. The howling and the tongue out. The smiling. And when I go up there, I can put it up to the light closer too, because I know the light's not on right here. You smell those treats, huh? Okay. Um, okay. How, are, how are you deciding to give that away? Um, Most engaged or what? Yeah who's most engaged and okay asking questions everything like that okay awesome can i keep going now yes <laughs> okay so what i was saying was um doing our part and that's like hanging all of these toys from their pens having the um the fishing pole that's hanging down that they're able to jump on and pull and tug um, the swimming pool, all of those things are building their confidence. Um, so what we're going to do now is get some delicious treats. So one thing we want to make sure we're doing to entice our puppy is have something that they are going to want. 
So some dogs are more motivated than others with their regular kibble. Why are you gonna chew on there? Um, but some might need something special. And so these guys are super food motivated. As you can tell, they're little chunky chunkies. Um, but I just have some liver treats, jerky treats. One thing that I'm gonna have for them that no one's had yet, I haven't even opened it, is this. We'll see how they do with these. These are, they stink. But these are um, fish skins. So they smell uh, really disgusting, but it is going to really get their nose working. And that is going to be a motivator, I guarantee you, because they've never had it. It's gonna be yummy. So right now I'm just filling my pockets with these and then I'm gonna pull out the very first thing and we will see. So our first thing that we're gonna do is um, the sniff mat. Now, a lot of this, for the sniff mat, a lot of that is um, just building their confidence to get your puppy to explore. So you want them to be an explorer and not be afraid to explore different things. So the puppies have never seen the things I'm showing you right now. They have never seen. The only thing they have seen is the pool and the tunnel. Um, <laughs> And this is just a sniff mat. You can buy any of them. This is nothing special, but it, I like the fact that it has this circle part so I could hook it on things, except these puppies are so ginormous that they just knock it off. So all I'm doing is putting a couple pieces inside here. And the, the reason why I want them to, to go up here is because I'm encouraging them to come up on this. So a regular sniff mat you're gonna put on the ground but I wanna see if they're gonna climb up because this right here is building his confidence to climb up on something. And he's getting underneath and it. And the other one's gonna go under it. So he's finding it. The other one is looking under. Look, buddy. Look. Ooh, it's right here. Ooh. So his brother is not um, coming up. So I'm just kind of enticing him, but I'm not forcing him. But do you see how confident his brother is? He's just up there checking it out. And if they pull it down, that's fine. Let them pull it down. <laughs> Good boy. So now his brother did it. Good job. And it's not even hard, guys. This is just something fun. They're working their nose. You're building a relationship with your puppy. And it's convincing them to climb up onto this and not be afraid of the sound of the texture. Okay. So that's our first one. They did pretty good, I would say, for never seeing it, but that's because, again, we have these amazing treats in here that they've never had. Good job, buddy. Now you're gonna destroy it. Can we move on? Here, I'll set this down here for you. Let's see. All right. That was a good sound. They yeah, jumped. and so sounds are super important to introduce our puppy to, so that way we are building that confidence and they're not spooked easily by sounds. Um, so my next one is, is kind of a fun one. So this is cardboard pile up. And normally I don't give my dogs cardboard. You never see cardboard out here. Um, but this is something that is good because you want to encourage your puppy to climb up in boxes over things and let things tip over and let it not distract them or worry them. We don't want them scared. So they've never seen these. They've never seen boxes. They've never seen that crinkly paper. And so we're just going to put a bunch of stuff. And as you guys know, I couldn't set all of this up ahead of time because they're all in here and they would be able to see it all right away. So what I'm doing as I'm piling this is I'm just putting some stuff in here. And what I want them to do is climb up here. And you don't have to do a bunch of things. Of course, they're over there with the lick mat or the um, the sniff mat. Come here, Papa. Hey. Yep. We got a new member, John. Welcome, John. And um, I do have a question. You kind of answered it, but Lisa asked, "What treats do you give?" So my kids got um, us bark box at Christmas time, and so we get new treats every month, and they're always different things. Um, right now, it is these chicken 
crunchers. But right now, all of their treats are from BarkBox because that's what we get every month. Lamb, um, pork. I gotta take this mat away because do you see? I don't even think you can see them. Over yeah, there. you can. So they're so interested in the smell of the food in there that they're excited. Oh, so do you see him? That's exactly what we want. That's all we want. We just wanted that. That is awesome. Good job, buddy. I didn't show him that. He smelled that there was a, a treat there. And so if he, if he jumps too much, this is going to tip over. That's what we're wanting. We want exactly that. Push it back. The little ones. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. We want him to see it. It tipped over. It wasn't super spooked by it. Hey, I know that you're so interested in that map, but there's more treats over here, buddy. I put one inside this box. <laughs> exactly what we want to see. So now I'm just going to tip it this way because there's all this paper in here. Do you think that they'll go in it? I don't know. Let's see. Your brother took them, bud. Now you got to come over here. You need to back the boxes up. Yeah. So, I'm going to do this real fast, see if they'll go in there, and then we're going to move on to the next one. They haven't figured out that it's in here. So, we might want to um, show them. But if we're not in a hurry, we could just let them explore. Now the other one is going in the box. That's perfect. I have a question from our new member, John. Yes. He said, can you use the same games with a grown-up? I have a Sheba that might like that. Absolutely. This is really going to build confidence for any age level. We obviously, we encourage everyone to start really early because if you start early, you're going to build that confidence as a young puppy and they're going to stay confident. But it, this will work on an adult dog. All of these will. So they haven't quite figured out to climb up here. Look. Look. No? This one's so worried about that mat. I wonder if I put the mat in the box, do you think he'll go in the box? <laughs> so this one's thinking about it. While he's doing that, I'm gonna move on to the next one. Let's see if he jumps in there or not. And this is not something that you're going to do one time and then be done. You can do this every day until they are totally confident. You could stack them high and let, obviously, they're really lightweight, so they're not going to hurt them. Um, but I wouldn't leave it if you're not watching them because you don't want them eating cardboard or hurting themselves. Would it make a difference if I did this outside? No, you could do it outside. So a lot of these things you could do inside or outside. <laughs> There he goes. Good job, buddy. He's found it. His brother's like, I don't know if I want to do this or not. <laughs> so can you guys see that? <laughs> this is all crinkly. There he goes. <laughs> it's not affecting him. He doesn't care that all of this is crinkling on him and touching him. This is all building his confidence. Now his brother has decided, oh, if it's not scary for him, then I'm going to do it too. And now look at them. They're both in the box, which normally this would be a very scary situation. Like when you're walking down the street with your dog and it's trash day or something blowing down the street, a lot of puppies and even adult dogs are spooked by that. <laughs> Good job. Good job, boys. Yeah, well, it didn't take long. Now they're both in the box. So you don't have to use this type of paper. You could even use bubble wrap, um, something that makes more sound. So you can advance it as your puppy gets a little more confident, a little more confident, make it a little more difficult, stack the things, put the treat up higher so they actually have to jump up and climb up there. Um, but you can tell that they are very confident very quickly. Um, we are going to have to take all of the things completely out of here because they're going to be so interested in this stuff 
they're not going to focus on anything else. Okay, so the next one. <laughs> hey, bud. Hey, can we, can we get out of the boxes? Huh? No? They want to be in the boxes still. All right, let me clean this up. Do you have questions while Alexis? No, I, I had you answer them. Okay. I'm just getting my next thing so that way, while they're playing in there. <laughs> All right, you two. I think we're done. Yeah, I think we're done in the boxes. Was that fun? Was that fun? Was that fun? All right. We're done with the boxes. No more boxes. Okay. I don't know if I could do this with both of them. We're going to try. Aaron said, is everyone else laughing as hard as I am? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Okay, so this next one, we are building um, their confidence by having them weave in and out of our legs. And this is because we want our puppies and our adult dogs to feel comfortable. Like, no matter what breed you have, if they're small, so a lot of small dogs are worried about us being big and tall and standing over them. And so this is going to help build their confidence with them coming in and out of your legs. Papa. Come here. You guys are so worried. Look. Oh. So I just want him to come through and around here and over here. And don't go too long without giving it to him because you want to reward him. It's right there, Papa. Look, goofball. Is there a way to desensitize puppies to sounds like thunder, which seem to bother a lot of dogs? Yes. Um, in fact, it's funny that whoever's asking that because... Megan. Who? Megan. Um, I actually am working on creating a, play, a couple playlists. Oh, boy. By the way, the puppies love water. These puppies, they could care less about water. Um, but I'm, I'm planning to make a playlist of sounds that you guys can play um, to help desensitize. But definitely playing those sounds is going to help. So especially 4th of July is coming very soon. And um, we want to desensitize our dogs to the sound of fireworks because a lot of dogs get out on 4th of July and are really spooked by that sound. So now I have the other one's attention. And literally, this is just getting them used to being all over our legs and standing when we're up high. And it's rewarding. Just be careful with your guys' fingers if you have a biter. Here. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. All right. I have a good question. Yeah. Do you have a way of holding the treat so that the dog does not get it? Yeah, I have a couple of things. So the way, I'm going to pull this out because this will help my fingers. Okay, so when you are not wanting them to have it, but they want it, you want them to smell it, when you have it in the palm of your hand, you're literally holding it with your thumb and your finger, okay? So they could smell it, Up higher. but they can't. They can smell it, but they can't grab it because I am holding it. And if you keep your fingers flat, then they won't bite your fingers. Okay? So you're doing this. Okay? But I have this. And this is a stick. So when you're working with a dog and you don't want to be hunched over, I have this on here. And I could literally be walking my dog so my dog's on a leash right here and I don't have to bend over and I'm getting their attention right here with this treat. So let's see if I can get his attention. Here, Papa. Papa. Oh, and this is also something new, right? It's a stick that he's not even sure of. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, my big full-size husky puppy is going to break it. Huh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you guys get the idea of that one. I know, I'm going to let you guys have it now. Here, here. I'm giving them tiny pieces, okay? So we're not giving them a lot. 
And I encourage you guys to do this stuff with their meal and not overfeed them with a lot of treats. Um, but some dogs won't respond to the kibble, so you have to do something else. And so you can do freeze dried, you could do um, dehydrated chicken or any of this good smelling salmon stuff. Okay, my next one. This is going to help whoever was asking about the noises. So noises, so this game's going to be great for puppies that are spooked easily. And what you're going to do, there's a couple of things that you guys can do for noises. So you can do just plastic water bottles. You guys are talking so I can hear you. Um, you can do plastic water bottles that are empty and they crinkle, right? So if you just put them down and they're empty even, they're gonna crinkle and something to entice them is putting some kibble inside of it um, so they smell that it's in there. I'm putting the lid back on because I don't want them to get it, but you can even leave the lid off. And you're just gonna encourage them to play with them, grab them, pick them up, shake them, step on them. And you see this sound is not really bothering them. But some puppies at this age, this is really spooky to them. And so another thing that you could do is a lot of us collect recyclables and we have them all. Get the plastic pool, which I'm going to pull out right now. I use the, the balls for toddlers um, and let them play in that. But you can fill it with these plastic water bottles. And when they jump in there, this is going to be the sound that they hear. And so this is going to help desensitize them from the sound and from the plastic filling. So since they were doing really good, I'm going to let that one open to see if they figure it out. But another thing for the sound is going to be the ball pit. So the ball pit is um, usually really loud if you do not have a cover on it. I have a cover on mine uh, because I don't want to hear all of this loudness all of the time. But I also use these pools for, for dogs that are having babies. <laughs> so do you see the puppy? He took that, he took it because of the smell of food is in there. I have some questions if you're ready. Um, okay, hold on. Okay. Let me just explain this. Last week, if you guys saw us last week, we introduced this to the puppies last week. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a, I won. I got it. Um, so we introduced this for the first time last week, and it didn't take the puppies long at all. I threw a couple pieces of treat in there, and they have been playing in this nonstop. I have to obviously take away what is <laughs> motivating him to disappear before I can get him to move on to the next thing. So he's pretty smart. He climbed through there and he's on that end now with that plastic bottle trying to get the food out so his brother can't get it. <laughs> this. Obviously, you don't want to do this if you guys aren't watching because you don't want them to actually chew this or pull this off. Um, but as long as you're around and you can make sure that they're safe, then this is a perfect little game for you to play with it. Come here. It's over here, buddy. So there's a few pieces of food in here. All I'm going to do is dump it in here. Although my puppies already love the pool. Come here. Pop up. I have it, Goofy. Go ahead, you can ask your questions. Okay. Uh, Michelle asked what the stick was called again. Um, I think Catherine put up your supplies list. I don't know if it's on there. I don't think it is on there. So this, this I'll tell you who, it, I'll put it up there. It's, um, there's a certain person that makes this. You want me to put it as a text? It's Brandon McMullen. Up okay. higher. Oh, I'm on the wrong camera. I don't think it's gonna focus. It did. It's not too dark. No, it's good. So it's it just folds up. It has this little hook, so you could take it with you when you're going on walks, and it extends out pretty far. 
um, I forget what it's called though, I'm sorry. Okay, um, do you have a separate pouch to keep the treats and meals or just your pockets? So I do have pouches, um, a lot of different pouches. The ones that I like the best are on my website and they have magnetic closures. Um, but I have several. In fact, one of my puppy owners got me this one, which is really cool. Um, it's a bag that I can carry, and it has all of these little zippers. Um, and then I, I really wear scrubs a lot because I am dealing with dogs and puppies, and I need lots of pockets, especially if I'm training. Um, so you can do either or, but depending on what you're wearing, sometimes it's hard to get stuff in and out of your pockets. That's why I like these, but also... The treat bags are best, um, but you can even use a Ziploc baggie. It's, you know, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just depends on your preferences. So they've never seen water bottles until now. Obviously, they aren't afraid of that. The ball pit, you, you guys would be surprised at how many dogs are terrified of this. Um, so this is a really good way to introduce them to this. This is really soft plastic. Imagine they're laying on all of these balls and what it's doing for their confidence level. You know, they have to hop in and out of here. They go bouncing all over. These things go flying out. Um, and I have some funny, funny videos that we'll be posting of the puppies in here yesterday. So now I'm gonna introduce the tunnel. Real quick. Yeah. Is the pool something even an adult will play in? Yes, yeah. Yeah, and you can get bigger ones too. You don't have to get the small ones. So all this is, is just the regular toddler plastic pool. We have a cover on it. These covers we get on Etsy, but you don't have to have the cover. But if you have a pretty shy, timid dog, you might want to consider getting this because it's going to help lower the sound and the echo. Um, whenever you have all of these on that plastic, it again, get pretty loud and depending on what you're putting in here. But literally, I bought all of these balls in one big bag on Amazon. Again, they're toddler balls that they go in the ball pits. But when you have an adult dog, um, even puppies that are pretty strong, they will bite through these. So you have to just keep an eye on them, make sure that they're not destroying the balls and throw them away as needed when they crush them. But they have balls specifically that are crush resistant. Um, so these are the better ones, so they don't crush as easily. So the puppies are you know, pretty heavy. Even the older dogs can go in here and they don't just crush. They're pretty good. Um, some of the cheaper ones will crush right away. Wow, you're loving this. He's loving this. Yeah, we're gonna take this from you now. So that sound doesn't bother them. In fact, they want it more. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get to, we're gonna get something else out. I don't want you eating this paper. Oh, Catherine put the link to the uh, stick. Oh, good. It's an Amazon link. She posted it in the, the chat. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, I did get it on Amazon, but I don't think it's on my website. Okay, moving on. Are you guys good? Can we get out of the ball pit? The ball pit is a lot of fun for the dogs, guys. Right now, they're busy and there's a lot of treats and everything going on, but they are, watch last week's and watch the next video I post of them just running and jumping in here like it's a, a kid uh, at Chuck E. Cheese. It's hilarious. But I have to put it away or else they're just gonna play in here. Huh, we're gonna get the tunnel. So another thing that you guys can get for them, which is, amazing to teach them to go through things um, is a toddler tunnel. You'll see that a lot of my uh, things for my puppies and my dogs is all kid related because they don't always make stuff for dogs um, and to be honest with you kid stuff's cheaper than dog stuff and so this one I got at Ikea and it's pretty sturdy, it's pretty durable. I like this one way better than some of the other ones I've gotten, and this was like $20 at Ikea. But it, the wire is really thickly padded, so they can't just chomp through this. And so if your puppy won't go through it initially, which most won't, so don't, don't think that they will, 
you can just literally have two people, one on each end, and you put your puppy on one end and you're calling the puppy on the other end with a treat or with their favorite toy or just calling them and see if they'll come through. Again, don't force them to go through this, um, but just encourage them to go through it. These dogs, I just introduced this to them yesterday. They literally run back and forth, hop all over it. Again, when I post this next video, you guys are gonna die laughing. Um, but if they want, then all we're gonna do is encourage them to go in. And since they love this thing so much and they want it, we'll see if we can get them to go in. They already did. You weren't. Oh, they did? Yeah, you weren't paying attention. You I were wasn't, talking. I was talking. Yeah, yeah, and as soon as you set it down, they went through it. And it rolls. So while they're in it, it's rolling and it's really helping with the sensory of things moving, all of this funny sound and texture. You smell the treats. You're a cheater. You're a cheater. <laughs> Man, whoever's getting Harley, they need to stock up on water bottles. <laughs> I have uh, two more questions for you. Okay. Um, how much exercise do they get? Um, so the, the exercise level depends on their age and so it's usually um, depending on like every month of age you're going to give them five to ten hey. minutes. Five to ten minutes of exercise per month in age. So an eight week old. I think I have to take that from them. Can I have that? Oh yeah, that is a hit. Um, so it'll be ten minutes twice a day, two or three times a day for physical exercise at eight weeks. But you're also doing mental stimulation, you're also doing training, you're doing a lot of things. But the, as they grow, you're gonna increase that um, exercise. And every dog is different. You know, older dogs are not as, um, as active as the younger ones, but some of the younger ones can really be pretty hyper and need to have a lot more exercise. Hi. And then I have a question from Diana, and she said, any recommendations for toys that keep them busy for a while? Rufus works through his um, interactive toys in under 10 minutes. He's very smart. Yeah. Um, in the freezer right here, Alexis, I have some mats. Um, can you grab them for me? I don't know if you quit trying to steal the treats. You're a cheater. You're stealing them. Real quick, Sean said, Ikea, did you sew it yourself? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, to be fair, this is probably the best quality tunnel that I've ever bought. Believe it or not. And most things from Ikea fall apart. This is very sturdy. Way better than any one I've had. So that's why I bought it. They had it on display. Do you see them? Yeah, I only found the one. There's another one in the bottom drawer. Okay. Um, so this is Diana, right, who's asking that? Yeah. Diana, have you tried these mats? So these are lick mats. I've talked about these before. Um, so this is a lick mat soother, and it's frozen. Oops. They, the puppies have never had this, um, so we're going to give them this here in a minute, too. But all that's in here is mushed up banana, frozen yogurt. Um, okay. They don't know what to do with it. So try this. Try a Kong that's frozen. Um, no, 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 no. Look, look what I got. Let's see. Mmm, what is this? <laughs> They've never had that. <laughs> That's, you guys are stealing the other dog's food. But these are frozen, so that might help you. And then psst, try putting a, um, uh, a bully stick in a Kong and freeze it with something yummy. All right, I'm going to keep going. Yep. Next is... Um, all right, let me get these out of the way. Okay, so now we want to encourage them to go on to different platforms and some things could be wobbling. So if you guys are in your, in your yard or you're walking in the neighborhood or going to the park, encourage them. If there's a small brick 
um, wall, then encourage them to walk on that wall. If there is benches and park um, things, equipment that they can climb on, encourage them to jump up and down on those things. It's really going to boost their confidence level whenever they're able to just hop up and down on things in those feelings of the different texture. So, you know, the brick wall or the rubber, or the plastic, um, that's going to definitely help encourage them to not be afraid of anything that they come across whenever they're out and about in our world. So one of them is super excited about the lick mat. The other one is super tired. Hey, he's tired now because he went to town on that, um, on this water bottle. So this is also working them, right? So now they're tired. So we've actually done a lot with our puppy just by giving him this, making him sniff, making him work with his nose, his mouth, his teething, um, and all of the other things that these, these puppies have done. Remember, they're seven and a half weeks, so they're exhausted already, so we're pushing our limits with them, so we're gonna try to push this along. I have a few more questions. Okay, I gotta take this away because I don't want him eating all of that. <laughs> okay, honey, can you take these for me? Uh, we're gonna start minutes? with Robin. She said, what other treats slash things do you suggest for the Kongs? Um, th there's a ton of recipes that you can put in the Kongs, but a lot of what we will use is yogurt, plain yogurt. I know I'm not in there. I'm sorry. I'm grabbing things for them. Plain yogurt, broccoli, carrots, um, peanut butter, all natural peanut butter with no sugar added. Um, fruit, so chopped up pieces of banana, uh, blueberries, canned food, strawberries, uh, canned baby food, um, even canned, I just, I try not to give them too much canned canned food, but what I would do is soften their kibble. <laughs> so if I soften their kibble and mush it up and then I use that to mix the other product with to put inside the Kong and that's going to freeze better. It's gonna hold it all together. So if you just put carrots and, hey, look at that. They've never seen this, never. So for him to do this is amazing. So I have to reward that. And this is all you're doing at this stage. Like you're just putting obstacle courses. You're just putting stuff out there and try not to let them bite you. Um, and encourage them to do it. I didn't even have to encourage him. He just did it and he's just standing here. That is amazing. You're a good puppy. Yes, you are. Your brother is a hog. He knows the food's over here. Here, you can't have it unless you come up here. Um, so you just need something that's going to, good boy, good job, uh, to, to hold the material together in that Kong so that when you freeze it, my next question is kind of funny. Would you recommend a jungle gym slide, ropes, etc.? Yes, absolutely. If you've seen our play yard, I don't know who that is, but our play yard, play yard um, and usually in here, but right now I have so many puppy pens in here. Um, we have a huge caterpillar tunnel and um, we have things hanging from all of it. We have slides. They climb up and down the slides and platforms and the ball pit. Uh, the dogs absolutely love it, especially you put the tunnel out there. Uh, it encourages them. That's why our puppies leave here pretty confident. Like they're not afraid to climb on things and jump on things and explore. But he's a biter. Uh, so yeah, definitely. Any toddler stuff, like go on to offer up or whatever uh, you guys have in your area of people selling used toddler stuff. Um, that's where we try to find a lot of our stuff because those jungle gym things are kind of expensive, uh, but a lot of people are selling them. And they don't have to be in perfect shape. They're for a dog. They're going to chew them up anyways. Uh, You're definitely liking this stuff. Here. <laughs> Next question is, have you ever put the puppies in a baby stroller and is the baby stroller safe? I have not put them in a baby stroller. Um, and I don't know that it would be safe. Um, but they have strollers for dogs. <laughs> now, did you see this puppy a second ago? How he was kind of getting aggressive because he was trying to get this treat. So that's when I pull it away. Pull my hand away, I pull it away, he doesn't get it. He needs to learn to take it gently or he doesn't get it at all. But either way, he's still climbing all over. Are you tired? You're tired. Hi. What foods do you freeze on the lick mats? The, the same stuff. 
So right now on there is just mushed banana. I just peel a banana and I hold it upside down and I just rub it across the whole thing. Um, yogurt, uh, frozen, uh, I'm sorry, mashed up kibble. That's again, I soften it and then mash it in there. So it's their meal. So you can do their whole meal inside a lick mat or inside of a Kong and it's gonna keep them uh, busy for a long time. And then last question for now is, do you recommend dog shoes? Um, I, I don't use them, so I can't say yes or no, depending on your area, if there's snow or if it's really hot on the ground, possibly. Again, you'll have to desensitize them to that, um, but I don't see why not if it's going to protect your dog. No biting, no biting. Nobody. So they did fine with climbing on this stuff, right? So this is all household stuff, guys. Literally, it's just a, a, a cushion from the patio furniture. It's just a box of that storage. This is an upside down litter box that I use for their puppy litter. Um, and they climb right up on this stuff. So this is just encouraging them. And you can even separate these out and have them follow you going through and over things. And it's just going to build their confidence. Huh? It's just going to build them up, build you up. Yeah. All right, let's see what else I have. So the last one, I already did that stuff. Okay, so my last one is gonna be my fishing pole. For anybody who is new, who maybe doesn't know about this pole, I love this toy. This is my absolute all-time favorite of every toy that we've bought. <laughs> yep, yep, I have to take it. Sorry. So this is um, also on the Amazon link, and this is the, this is a brand new one. I had to buy a new one. It is called Outward Hound Tail Teaser. Outward Hound Tail Teaser. My all-time favorite, all of our puppies and dogs love this, as you can tell. I need it. Drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. Okay, now whenever you're playing with this, any type of tug of war, any type of chase, the important thing to remember is that you have to let your puppy win. So if you are constantly running and chasing and making them jump and they don't ever win, you're going to discourage them and you're not going to help build your confidence in your dog. You're actually going to lower their self-esteem because now they can't get it. Um, so the, the goal is to let them have fun with this, but they need to win. They can work for it, but they need to win once in a while. This is just on a stick and it has a rattle, but you can put other things on here. Like you could put that water bottle, tie it on here, as long as you're able to keep that lid on, um, or screw or put a hole in the water bottle. Can I untie the knot first, buddy? and encourage them to grab the water bottle because that water bottle makes a totally different clink, crinkly sound, right? So any of the things that you can tie on here, do it. They, this comes with two of these. They love this toy. And we literally just let them chase it and it's gonna build their confidence because they're catching something. <laughs> And then you can work with them on this for recall to get it back. Um, but I've got two puppies in here, so it is definitely a lot harder to get them to let go. But this is my all-time favorite. So this will help, guys. And this is also going to exercise your dog. And um, you don't have to do a whole lot. But you're building that relationship with your puppy. So do you see how I just let them win? And as they get a little older, they'll jump up for it. Now, one thing you want to make sure you don't do is let them chew on this rope because they will make it shred. And don't drag them too much. <laughs> All right. Do you have any other questions? That's my last one. I do. Okay. Um, uh, Jason asked, at what age do you recommend uh, running with them? Um, once they're probably three and a half, four months old, you can probably start running with them. I mean, you could still start young, like just for, you know, quick around the block stuff. Um, but they'll, they'll tire out really fast at eight, nine, ten weeks. So they won't be much of a, a good running partner for you. But when they're about three and a half, four months old, probably is a good time. 
Um, next one is Sean. Pepper goes nuts for with that toy. Um, but how the heck do you swap out the end on that thing? <laughs> oh, it so it should have come with an extra one. Um, and if it did, if it did, it has a loop on on here. Like ours has an extra one right here because this one's brand new. <laughs> so do you see this loop? Yep. So that's all you're gonna just loop that through. This is the replacement. But they also sell extra replacements of this if your stick is good and your replacements are gone. Um, then you can just buy the replacements. Yeah, this is our favorite. And for the little puppy pin that we're live streaming 24 seven, um, all I did was I took one of these and instead of the toy that is on here now because they destroyed that last toy, I just tied a toy that had a rope on it, I tied that toy <laughs> onto this loop and that's what those puppies in the other room are playing with. Um, oh, sometimes I see it hanging in the room. Do you have a way of attaching it to the wall? <laughs> so I have a, I don't have a way. I don't have a fancy way. I jimmy rig a lot of things. Um, so on this wall, we have a shelf and I, and it has a, a pole on the shelf and I literally just maneuver this in there and I bungee it. <laughs> so yeah. And same with over there in the playroom where the puppies are, where I live stream 24 seven, it is bungee to my staircase, but it works. So whatever I can do, um, to get it to hang for them and I don't have to always hold it. Just make sure if you do that, that it's not low enough to where they can just chew on the, the, um, the rope because that's how they'll destroy it. We never leave this out because they will chew on the rope and it'll be trash. Once the rope is chewed off, you can't replace the rope. Um, how late do you recommend spaying or neutering for the bones? Um, we're definitely not a vet and so we would always just encourage everyone to go off of their vet's recommendation and do your own research. Um, I have heard a lot of stories of people waiting until they're older because of the growth plates needing to close and so that is definitely something that we would encourage you to do is just find out what your vet thinks, you know, when their growth plates are going to close but I would say probably nine months or so. Again, I'm not a vet though. I would go off of whatever your vets recommend. Um, what can I no. do if I have a puppy that won't stop chewing on things? He's not supposed to chew on things. He is one years old. <laughs> He's not supposed to. One years old is still a puppy. <laughs> um, so I would say he probably needs more exercise. He needs more training, more mental stimulation. A tired dog is a good dog. If he's bored out of his mind, he is going to get into things. So you need to get him um, tired. And if he's one years old and he's running free in the house and chewing things, he shouldn't be free in the house. So we always um, are a huge advocate of Dogs do not get free run of the house until they can be trusted. If your puppy cannot be trusted, they don't get free run of the house. So this is why we have this room that is 100% safe for them. Hey, I just noticed um, Owen was on. I don't know if he's still on. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, next question is, how far can you walk them as puppies? Um, so again, it depends on the, that puppy's age. Um, because some puppies can go a lot longer and, than others and depending on their weight too. But you can walk a puppy that's three or four months old for probably a half a mile or maybe even a mile depending, ouch, depending on um, how well rested they are. You literally will just have to test that puppy and see what works for that puppy. There's nothing that I could say is going to be a one size fits all in a puppy. They have a water, they have a a ball in their water. Hi, you like that toy, huh? Uh, you like that toy. Do Klee Kai act like huskies? I would like to know because I'm getting a husky soon. 
though in my later years I'd like a clique eye. <laughs> um, so they do have a lot of similarities. I actually made a video on a comparison with the Huskies and the clique eye. So they definitely have some same traits, but they also have a lot that are different. Um, but a lot are very similar with their quirkiness and their funny and their howling and their talking and their vocalness. Um, definitely the same. Very loyal companions, super intelligent, sometimes too intelligent for their own good. <laughs> All right. I don't have any more questions, but I do have a winner. Oh, Alexis picked a winner. All right. The winner is going to be our new member, John Richard Pagan. Ah, congratulations, John. So you need to do us a favor. Um, first of all, you need to tell us that you're on here so that we know that we can send this to you. And then Alexis will put my email up on the screen. And if you can email us um, an address and we will get this new frosted mason jar to you. He's on. Yay! Congratulations and thank you for becoming a member. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take this away. I'm going to put their ball pit back in here for them. I don't want this destroyed. No more. No more. We're done with that. So did you guys see how I just plopped that thing down and it did not affect them? It didn't spoof them. They don't care. This pool makes a bunch of crinkly sounds. They don't care. Um, do you want to switch this camera view to the bottom and I'll come back over there now? Sure can. Yay! All right, pop ups. Oh, my cardboard's over here. <laughs> okay. I haven't been in the playroom in a long time, at least for the whole show. I talked for that whole hour. Mm -hmm. Oh, the light's bright. I look so white. I don't know. I'm so shiny. It wasn't like that earlier, was no, it? No, uh-uh. It's weird. I don't know. Um, all right. Do we have any questions? I really look like I'm shiny. <laughs> don't I? <laughs> Why? This thing. No. Mm. <laughs> Whoa. That's weird. It's like your teeth. But I'm not, I promise I'll shower. Oh well, you guys get a shiny me. I don't know how to fix that. Um, maybe I got a shiny in there. So congratulations again, John. Thank you for being a member. Um, if you guys don't have any other questions, I think we're good. The light right? is really bright tonight, Catherine. The light is bright? That's okay. Yeah, it, I have it super, super low, just so that I'm not sitting in the dark, because there's no light in here. Um, so anyhow, I guess we are going to call it a day. If you guys are a member, of course, we have our members only uh, live stream that is directly after this um, for members only. So go to the community tab. You can click on that. Give me like two minutes before I hop on there just so I can go potty. Um, I appreciate all of you guys for hopping on today. Thank you so much for all of the love and support. We hope that you learned something about building your puppy's confidence with games. And until next time, bye. <laughs> As the puppies go crazy. <laughs>